What up everybody, Mark Fusker here for Behind the Green Screen, the channel where I cover every aspect of how I make my Wine World TV show. If you like what I'm doing here, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends to do the same. That helps the channel grow. Cameras, everybody wants to know what camera you use to make your video. Does it matter? No. Every single camera from the past 10 years can create at least a 720p video, and it's just fine. 1080p is better, and most of the cameras from the past 10 years can do that too. You don't need 4K. It's nice if you utilize it, but it's a bonus. DSLR, mirrorless, the same for our purposes. Digital point and shoot or bridge cameras, specialty digital cameras like action and 360 cameras, camcorders, and smartphones. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. No one camera is the best. Some are more flexible than others, but each category is capable of producing video for a YouTube channel. My wine channel started with a flip cam. I moved to a Kodak ZI8 for a while, then for years a Canon Vixia HF-M500. A few years ago I felt that the iPhone's cameras were at a point where I could reliably make the switch to it for travel. Eventually I switched to using one exclusively as my main camera. So why use a smartphone as your main camera? The vast majority of people out there use a DSLR or mirrorless camera for YouTube. And these cameras can cost as much as a smartphone just for the camera body alone. It's definitely possible to get one with a kit lens or default lens for less than a tricked out smartphone even less on the used market. For me, going that route just isn't viable. First, cost. I've already mentioned that I can get a decent DSLR for the same price as the iPhone I use, but that's an extra cost, and a cost that I don't have to put on a credit card to pay for or save up for. Yeah, I have a monthly payment for the phone on my phone bill, but it doesn't take up $800 to $1,300 on my credit line, and there is no interest for financing the phone with the phone company. In addition to that, since it is a smartphone, it's something that's with you all the time. One of the most common phrases in photography is, the best camera is the one that you have in your hand or pocket, and smartphones have been taking great photos and video for a few years now. Workflow. Ever since my Kodak ZI8 days, I've started and stopped my camera remotely. It was one of the requirements for the Canon Vixia HF-M500, and it was one of the requirements when I switched to using an iPhone with a smartphone, Filmic Remote, in conjunction with Filmic Pro, does just that. It's only been very recently that Filmic Remote was even available on an Android, so it was pretty much an iPhone-only thing. The need for remote control of my camera wasn't just a nicety, it became a necessity for me. This table is about eight feet long, and I sit in the middle of it. My camera's about five, six, seven feet away from me. It's very much a hassle to get up and start my camera every single time, especially since I record multiple shows in one session. Part of that workflow is being able to see myself. For the ZI8, I hung a mirror behind the camera to make sure I was framed correctly. As you can see, I don't have any room to stand behind the camera to get my framing right. Of course, over time, you figure out where the camera needs to be and about how to angle it, but you still run the risk of being off kilter. Once I got the camcorder, I then had a flip screen to make sure I was framed correctly. Then the selfie camera on the iPhone finally got to the point where I could use that if I wanted to, especially with the iPhone X but Filmic Remote allows me to use the better rear camera instead. It also allows complete control over the phone's camera settings. A side note, over the years the reliability of Filmic Pro has been sketchy, so having a good selfie camera as a backup was a major deciding factor. And second side note, the DJI Osmo Pocket also has a similar remote control app. It should also work with their action camera. All right, so convenience, a smartphone fits in your pocket. No need to bring a bulky camera bag with lenses, heavy tripods, heavy batteries, and other equipment to set up a shot. Depending on the phone, your photos and videos get automatically backed up to a cloud service too. So you don't have to worry about SD cards. And speaking of SD cards, you'll never have to worry about a corrupt one if you're using the phone's internal storage. iPhones don't have anything else, of course. I'll say this though, I've never, had a pic or video get corrupted on an SD card. Never. Knock on wood, right? So while I've heard many of my fellow photography YouTubers talk about this subject, I've personally never had it happen. Yet. Pro tip, assuming you're in the market to upgrade your smartphone, make sure you get one with the largest storage capacity, be it internal or via SD card for those Android phones. My iPhone 11 Pro is 512 gigabytes and my iPhone 10 is 256 gigabytes. Since I use the iPhone 11 Pro solely as a camera, I have 488 gigabytes of available space on it. I only have the most important apps for me on that phone. 
To be fair, especially digital cameras do almost everything a smartphone does, but none do all of it on their own. All right, lack of depth of field. Now, I don't really care about depth of field, as you can see. I mostly use a green screen here, so a shallow depth of field is useless for me. Even when I'm in the field at a winery, I want everything in focus. I want the audience to see the entire background clearly. I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a videographer. Now, that doesn't mean that having that blurred background is a bad thing. Depending on your goal, it may be a necessity. I just don't care about that. It doesn't fit with what I'm doing. To go a little off tangent, only because I checked this out yesterday before, you know, well after I'd written the script, there is an app called Focus, or Focus, F-O-C-O-S, Live. It does do a software version background blur. It's pretty good but you have to use that as your recording app. You can't like put it in there and edit later, as far as I can tell. So if I recorded using Filmic, I don't think I can import that video into Focus and then put the blur background. But you can adjust how much blur is in the background and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really cool concept and it would be really cool if you're into that type of stuff um, for Filmic Pro to do that. Filmic Pro kind of has a focus thing. You can do focus pulling and all that, but it's, it's not as slick as this other one. All right, back to the script. Battery life. Smartphones shooting video or even pictures will almost always outlast any other camera, at least other cameras with a standard or even typical extended battery. Now at home, my iPhone is plugged in, so I don't have to worry. In the field, I don't always have access to power, so being able to have a camera that stays on and most likely recording for two or three hours is critical. I think the longest I've gone is just over two hours with my iPhones. Plus, it's easier, in my opinion, to power smartphones and other specialty digital cameras via USB and a power bank for really long shoots, especially in places where an electrical outlet is not convenient. Extension cords and power strips take up more space and weight than a decent power bank or two and a few long USB cables. There's a little side note about this with the DJI Osmo Pocket. In doing some testing, I had it plugged into AC power and hit record. I recorded about 94 minutes of 4K 30 video and its internal battery showed 76% in charging. It started out at almost 100%. So even though it's charging, it's using more power than it's taking in. The iPhones don't have this problem with plug into AC power or a USB power bank. The battery never goes below 100%. I tried this with the USB power bank and the DJI Osmo Pocket and got basically the same results though you know, about 76% after about an hour and a half. So it's enough for like really long shoots, but if you're gonna plan on doing something like for five, six, seven hours, yeah, that might not work with something like the Osmo Pocket and maybe other cameras like it. Runtime. Almost all DSLRs and regular digital cameras have one major flaw for me, an artificial record limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds for video. It's an antiquated EU tax law a handful don't have that time limit, and as a result, either the camera manufacturer is eating that additional cost or is being passed on to the consumer somehow. Camcorders, smartphones, and especially digital cameras don't have these limitations other than how long the battery lasts or just make sure it's connected to some kind of power source like an AC or power bank, right? This is a big thing for me as I regularly will have recording sessions that last longer than 30 minutes. Most of my current episodes recording sessions tend to be less than that, but it's still a limitation. Combine that with the fact that most DSLRs don't have a reliable way of being remotely controlled like I can with the iPhone, that's a deal breaker for me. So you can have all those fancy DSLRs that shoot an 8K RAW or even something more reasonable that does normal 4K, but I'll stick to my iPhone for videos. That's not to say I haven't looked at other cameras, even going back to a camcorder. However, every time I do, I realize that my current setup gives me everything I need for video. That doesn't mean I wouldn't look at a DSLR, mirrorless, or maybe a bridge camera for photos. I actually have a bridge camera on my Amazon wish list to maybe get in the future, and it's actually not that expensive. But for video, it's still got that time limit. Okay, question of the day. What is your main camera? Put your answer in the comments. If there's anything you'd like me to cover about how I create my videos and everything else related to that, then leave that in the comments too. And that brings us to the end of the show. If you like what you see here, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. See you later.